happens when a asteroid or a very large meteor impacts the Earth? Well, it creates a sizable crater, maybe 10 to 20 miles in diameter, number one. Number two, the explosion that produces that crater has a tremendous amount of energy in it. When an object from space impacts with a planetary surface like the Earth, a tremendous amount of energy is released in a very short period of time. And when the impact takes place, much of this energy is converted to thermal energy, converted to very, very high temperatures that melt and destroy a good portion of the asteroid and or um, large meteor, and also melts and liquefies a huge amount of the planetary surface that's being impacted. And this explosion with molten material is essentially capable of putting material into orbit around the planetary surface. The impact is so great that that energy is capable of being sufficient to launch a material at high enough speed to, to reach what's called escape velocity, which essentially allows the object to possibly leave the gravitational field of the gravitational pull of the impacted planet. And this is what tektites are about. Tektites have always been very mysterious geologic phenomena. Until the, until the Apollo explorations of the moon, uh, tektites were thought to be material blasted not off of the Earth, but blasted off of the planetary surface of the moon. Uh, the moon essentially is a small planet, it's a satellite of the Earth, but an object impacting the moon is much easier to be launched into space and to orbit around the moon and or to orbit around the, the Earth and that material eventually uh, starts to slow down, the orbit decays and the material falls to the surface of the planet with the largest gravitational field, which would of course be the Earth. And this was the explanation of tektites. Now what tektites are, as uh, I'll show you right here, these are tektites. Come in a variety of shapes. Notice the surface. That is what is called an ablation surface. And they're made of glass. They come in weird shapes. Look at this one. A little, little space, a little flying saucer. Many of them are dumbbell shaped like this. glass. And very peculiar glass. The glass is very, very low in water. Most glass that's produced on the earth will have some, some water, chemically combined water, in with the glass. These have absolutely no water in them, which gives them a much higher melting point. They come in a variety of shapes. This one was hollow inside, you can see. This one is more or less round. They're very peculiar. And they're found, tektites are found over a large part of the surface of the Earth. And they were, before the Apollo exploration, they were, they were considered to be products from the moon. They were considered to have been blasted off of the lunar surface by impact on the lunar surface and the impact, as I mentioned earlier, being so severe that material was blown in orbit, which orbited the moon and the earth, but mostly the earth. And that orbit eventually decayed and they fell to the earth. But they were thought to be samples of the lunar surface, the samples of lunar rock. With the Apollo exploration, which brought lunar rocks back, 
the chemistry of lunar rocks did not match up with the chemistry of, but rather the chemistry of tektites averages out to be very similar to the chemistry of average continental earth material, very high in silica, or very high in silicon and aluminum and potassium and sodium, which lunar rocks had a lower content of those same elements. When light is transmitted through uh, Indochinites, it's a very, very deep green, very deep greenish glass, which essentially looks black uh, when you get it with any thickness.